Right, so welcome to episode two of Let's Talk um, um, about Scottish football. I'm pretty sure it's Let's that. Talk Football. Yeah, about yeah. That. Right, episode two. Uh, last episode we discussed about a transfer move. Uh, we were discussing um, a wee about the Scottish Cup semi final. Um, it was about that. Um, but we don't. We do now know who's going to be playing in the Scottish Cup final. It is St. Johnson versus Hibs. Lewis, who do you think is going to win that one? Hibs. Hibs. I think Hibs are going to win it as well. Goal. Yeah. I don't know oh yeah, we discussed him as well. Yeah, transfer news. Yeah, Hib Marciano. Yeah. Um, but let's before we get it loose because obviously tomorrow night is Scott Brown's last game for Celtic at Celtic Park. Okay. Um, if you can think, I don't know if you've got it off the top of your head, but I've got some moments here on my phone anyway. But are you getting any top moments of Scott Brown you can remember maybe if you can off your head? Probably. Although there's none now, I was actually there to see. Yeah. Just how long ago he could have been recorded, really. Hmm? What was those? Probably the Bruni. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, when he scored that goal, you said that was a really good goal. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um. Just turn something around, guys. Um, well, I've got some top five Scott Brown moments here. I, I don't know if you'll agree at those, but see when before Rogers came in for, say, Ronnie Dyer left Celtic. Um, yeah. So Brown was in a bad situation. He was getting injuries and he was getting. And they were in such were holding him upright and he was never fully fit, okay? Yeah. And when Brendan Rogers came in, he, I think, really, to be honest, I think he really liked his career for a couple of you know. You know the story after it, you know, the, the yeah. Invincible season. I don't know how we managed to do it, but we did, we did it. Um, um, I remember this one very well because I thought when when Hampton scored that, uh, was it 89th or 99th win at uh, um, Equaliser? I think it was 90. Um, Hampton scored that goal and I thought, you know, we've blew it again, we've blew another 1-0 lead. We should have been beating Hampton about 4 or 5 nil, you know, the whole game, but... Um, Rangers had just dropped points away to Aberdeen and we thought that we were going to go too clear at the top going into the Christmas period. However, a late Ogden Pole equaliser changed things, but of course, if any man could change the, the complexion of that title race, it was going to be Scott Brown. It had to be him, didn't it? It just had it written in the stars, yeah. I would say. Um, I'll put, you know, two more in. We'll get two more in. Um, you know the song was Scott Brown won the league at Rugby Park. Yeah, you, can, you, can't even, you can't forget that one. <laughs> Um, mm. So the corner came in, it came off a boy at his header, uh, head, and then I don't know what, Scott Brown just volleyed and it deflected, I don't know how it went in, to be honest. I don't know how it went in. Um, but it did go in. Um, and we went eight points clear at the top. And then you know the story from that. Top 10 questions I still can't answer. <laughs> and the last one, Captain Invincible, who can forget that? The Invincible season. But we'll move on from that. And we've got some news about, not just from Celtic, but from Rangers as well. Uh, I told Lewis a wee bit earlier when we left school. It was that Celtic and Rangers will be allowed to enter B teams to take part in the Scottish Lowland oh, Football yeah, League that. next season for one season only. A majority of Lowland League clubs voted in favour of this proposal today. And that was from the Sky Sports, uh, if you're interested in that. Um, right, Lewis, you know a lot of loan players that have gonna, like, are going to have to come back from... Um, for like not just from Celtic or Rangers, but you know from Scottish. Um, but for no other, let's start with the man himself, Alvin Cham, who got a transfer himself, oh got his own bloody manager from Marseille. Got he just left. I, I, yeah, I don't I don't know how else to explain it. Um, he's had one nightmare a season, not just for Celtic, but him himself. Um. He, he made limited appearances for Celtic. I, I, you basically count on your hands. Um, you know, <laughs> I think it was around about six or something. But um, he only made yeah six appearances. I just found it here. Six appearances, and um, he might want to add his hundred and forty. <laughs> Alright. Um Are those viral He might want to add to his hundred and forty seventh appearance he made for Celtic to date. 
Um, obviously, with Scott Brown's departure to Aberdeen confirmed, there could still be a place for the. I don't know how he got any Man City squad. I don't know. He must have been bad that time. And Jonah. Um, oh, no. Um, while we're doing this podcast, my United are playing Leicester, and Luke Thomas just scored for Leicester. That's just pain in my pain. That's just pain. Right, anyway, let's move on. Um, there could still be a move for um, Enchantment to come back, but I don't think it will be Lewis. What do you think about you? Enchantment go? Please go just sell my favourite. Yeah. Oh, uh, I on I think we'll move on to... What? Did you see Aaron in the background? Right? No, I just saw his head. That was it. Oh God. Um, we want to a Rangers. Um, oh, you would. I would want to uh, St. Mirren, uh, St. Johnson. Sorry, uh, his name is Glenn Middleton. Um, he was a cup hero for St. Johnson the weekend. There, he has um he caught the eye the recent weeks since joining the Saints on loan in January. Um, he scored a great free kick against St. Mirren. Good one. Um, and he wants to be part of Gerrard's side next season, following from his move in January. Blah, blah, so he's only had three. Um, he scored three goals, eleven appearances, and uh, one assist. Um, that is a re- um, maybe for you Rangers fans. What do you think about that? Do you think he'll be a good player coming back, or will Gerrard just loan him out, or even possible transfer him out? Um, we move on to another Celtic player. Lewis. I don't know if you remember him, but I don't know. It was a weird sign. I don't know who managed to sign him. It was Marvin Schwed. Do you remember him? Oh yeah. Uh, a player who certainly would have helped Celtic this, well, according to this uh, newspaper, said season. Many fans were curious regarding the loan move for Swift this season. Oh, here we go, here we go. Oh, oh. Yeah, that's the team that should play uh, tomorrow night. Uh, that one. Well, it should be. Marciano yeah. should be there, you know. Um, I would make one change. I make. I make one change, Lewis. I would get. I would get somebody else for Kenny. I know he's probably already all right in FIFA, but actually, you know what I mean. And I've literally just started oh. career right um, Following on from his departure of wingers such as Scott Sinclair, I don't think we should have let him go. And serious injuries caused to Mikey yeah. Johnson, who recently just got back, and James Forrest this season. So they're going to be doing um, with a player to operate on the f- on the, you know, the wing the wings. Um, Shrev had to prove his worth to Celtic following his arrival and seen very limited opportunities, even though he scored it on his debut in a Champions League qualifier for the club. Uh, this season saw the two times capped Ukrainian and nationalist loaned out to Belgian side KV Michelin, where he faced off against another Celtic loanee in Jack Hendry. There you go. He had made 21 appearances in all competitions this season, scoring four goals and registering three assists. Depending on the manager and formation Celtic were looking to play next season, Schwedt could be still yet become a valuable as- asset for the club next season. Uh, what do you think about Lewis Jink? We should keep him maybe next season as a winger, maybe. Who? Uh, Marvin Swed. When he has played, he hasn't been the most convincing player. Yeah, I'll bring out a point that I think you're trying to say, Lewis, that we've not seen him much. You know, we're not seeing him play as much gameplay as you wanted to play him. You know, he's. Br- I think it was about maybe two million, three million pounds spent on him, and we loan it, we blown him out. You know, I don't think that was right, but um. I think it was due to other than the injuries, it was due to attitude. Ah, okay, okay. Um, we move on to whoever um this season uh the Scottish Football Writers Association Young Player Year, and that was won by Josh Doig, the Hibs left back. He was crowned that the other day. Um, and we'll move on a bit of news, it's still Scottish type because it's talking about um, Rangers, um, involved in Rangers actually. The Slavia Prague... I'm just going to take a second. Okay. Right. And I'm back. 
Uh, as soon as you come back, Lewis, my United just scored. It's Mason Greenwood. It's um, As I was saying, Slavia Prague, Slavia Prague boss, I am not going to pronounce his name. That is going to be an impossible name to say. Had expressed his admiration for the racist, um, he's racist player, and um, he also claimed that see Kemal Roof how he got that challenge on the goalkeeper. He said um, Kemal Roof could have killed his goalkeeper. Well, it makes a fair point. It was a fractured skull. <sighs> I didn't hear about the skull fracture. Yeah, um, I knew it was a bad injury, but like, yeah. skull fracture. Chicken International uh, with a fracture skull. I mean, from the pictures you could see it, it wasn't looking too good for him. But um, we move on to a funnier point of the episode, Lewis. Um, the main man we want to talk about, Neil Lennon, Lewis. He just came out of job since February, and he's already there. There's been links with him going to Salford City, or Salford City, whatever you want to call it. I am not even kidding. Salford ball promotion when I thought they would like decide to win yeah. the league two this year. He could maybe do a decent job while the club's just getting mm -hmm. everything sorted out. That's well, what they're trying to do. the bookies have got. Yeah. Um, the bookies have got them at fourteen to one. That's mm, decent, I would say, if you're putting a, pot, a bet on that one. And also Derek McInnes is in, in, um, on the front line to get that job as well. Um, Lewis, what do you think about, um, I brought it out on the back pages video yesterday on my channel. What do you think about Conor McGregor's apparent talks to buy shares from Derek Desmond at Celtic? What do you think about that? I'd take it. You'd take it? Like, I think he has good spirit. Mm hmm Considering his whole identity in yeah. MMA, he's got my favourite MMA fighter. Granted, yeah. I don't know too many, but he certainly is one of my favourites. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think he could be good. I think he would be more interested in, you know, the fans as well if he bought a share, you know, and... Yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll move as on. As long as we don't leave any yeah. big decisions up to him, because yeah. then we're not because he gets on the head. Um, yeah, I wouldn't trust him to make financial decisions for an entire football club. I'm not calling him dumb or anything, but yeah. there's a reason he got into wrestling and not in, other than his strength. Yeah. It's um, hard to explain what I'm trying to say, but some people yeah, understand it, me. Yeah, they'll understand you. Um, I think we'll move on to the point um, before we move on to a, a point in the episode. We'll, I'll get to it and then we'll, we'll move on to the quiz. But... Um, the point is that um, CEI or how we've been discussing it for weeks, Lewis, just me and you, I think he's um, a definitely maybe a captain, say, if you want to offer him a new contract, put the captain sitting in there. I think he's, I think definitely he's got the vocal, you know, he's very vocal. Um, you know, to be honest, Anne was a better captain than McGregor. Oh yeah, I, I think there's too much pressure for him. I don't think he, he deserved, like, alright, he's getting stick for, like, he's not putting a shift. But, pressure player. Like, yeah. If, he can't take pressure, if you mm -hmm. ask me. Um, sure he can show up in big games, but he does tend to just fade away. How mm -hmm. about your idea, Lewis? I think I've seen it on um, my phone a couple, uh, a couple of minutes ago, actually. Somebody said, suggesting I uh, are moving back into his role of what he played before in CDM. Um, obviously, Brown's moving away, you know, to Aberdeen. If he was selling Cham, you know, even for free, don't care, just get him at the club. I could maybe fit in that role and you get a newer centre back, maybe. I'm just saying maybe. Or you could put in the centre back. Yeah. We do have the man, Lemmy, that I, um, that I would look like Stephen Welch. Yeah. Him and Julian, I think, could be decent. Yeah, I think it would. Um, For what Julian lacks in physical strength, mm -hmm. my god, does Welch have quite a bit of strength? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, Lewis, um, I didn't dis I don't uh, discuss it with you just yourself, but your thoughts on I did make a video on it. I think it was about a couple of days ago or something about Shane Duffy. Obviously, Celtic announcing that he has to go back early to Brighton because he picked up an injury and he'll be ruled out of Celtic's last two games of the season. What's your thoughts on Duffy this season? Bad timing. Uh, uh, I agree on that one. Yeah, yeah. Obviously his dad died so yeah. his mental health took a hit. But the thing is he's not he's not taking a step wrong for mm. the Irish national team. Yeah. So, I don't really know what happened for the team mm. playing. But I think 
if he had came in another different season, yeah. whether it be this yeah. next season or last season, mm -hmm. he, he could have let the league on for you. I agree with that, Lewis. I mean, you know, obviously his dad dying was, was you know, very sad for him and stuff, but... I think going to the point some Celtic fans are saying that maybe we should get, if Eddie Howe comes in, maybe go away from the point that if players are Celtic fans, you know, just, I don't know. Yeah. If they're he good. Yeah. Get big Steve Cook in here. Aye. Eddie Howe's main yeah, That's what I mean. Get If you can play football decently, you know, good footballer, get him in, you know. I'm happy enough. Whether, even after a mercenary. Yeah. For a while, I'm happy enough. Um, I'm about. Steve Cook. Mm -hmm. like, there's a reason he was made captain by Eddie Howe. I think he'd do a job yeah. himself if he did move Irish to CBN. Well, while we're on the topic of Eddie Howe, what do you think about Eddie Howe? Why is it taking so long? I know we got a statement earlier today. I think it's a good thing on yeah. why it's taking so long. Okay. It means he's happy he's got to he get everything set up. Mm -hmm. The thing is, he doesn't want to go back into managing until the next season. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, anyway. Yeah. But really, I would say the main reason is he just doesn't want to get back into it now. He wants everything to be sell with any clubs he might move mm -hmm. to before he obviously goes to them. Yeah. Well, yeah, there was reports. I don't know if it's true. It's just, you know, obviously Instagram. But there was reports on some Celtic fan pages I was obviously following Instagram saying that Eddie Howe has just apparently had bought a, a, a house in East End of oh, Glasgow. Yeah. Um, a promising news. I don't know if it's just a load of, you know, maybe WhatsApp gossip, you know. But um, yeah. if it's true, Rangers seen yeah. where some Rangers fans type down. There's a reason Celtic aren't doing very well. You when it's lost the dressing room, him, Brown, and Ayer fall, and sorrow. That's something I can't remember. I had a bunch of players when I went up against Lenny's Bushies and just didn't talk to people about it. Right. So you can't really trust yeah. a lot of things. I mean, yeah, I did send you a couple of weeks ago because I, I believed it myself, you know, Eddie Howe's. Because, you know, it was a black, you know, black, um, you know, spe uh, Mercedes, you know, you thought you'd expect maybe Eddie Howe to come out of the van, you know, but it turned out it wasn't. Um, Maybe it was interviewing someday. We don't know who it was, but um, you know, um, hopefully coming weeks, coming days. Now we move on to transfers. Transfers. Um. By the way, this doesn't have to be about Celtic. This is just general transfers. Um, you got any transfers as well? We're not too to talk about football. For now, let's talk about football. Anyway, so reports are uh, a goalkeeper has been linked with Bayern Munich to be sent to, to be back up as Nubel wants to move away. If I can find the article, I will okay. tell you the goalkeeper's name. He's been linked with Bayern since Nubel wants someone to get more playtime. Okay. Also, the potential buyer of Derby County posted a house that I found on TikTok. Hmm. Trying to pretend it was his own. Ah, here you go. Buffon has been linked with it as backup. Ah, yes. Yeah. I think it could be a good move. Obviously, Nubel needs playtime. And Buffon uh, uh, won't be playing for Juventus. That's my block. I think it could be a good move, what do you think? Yeah, that would be good for him. Um, more you years into the... interesting transfer rumours? I don't think so. I mean, I got the other one day in the, the first podcast about Beaton, yes, and that was does. really it. Yes, he does. Um, oh, interesting oh, news for Scottish um, fans, especially if you're a Mullerwell fan. If you bought a season ticket for this season, Mullerwell FC have come out with a big statement saying, if you've bought a 2020 slash 21 season ticket, we are giving you a free one for 2021-22. See you back home soon. What do you think about that, Lewis? I think, I think every club should do that. I, I think, I th and I'm yeah. being honest in saying that. Or at least do, like, a reduced price considering yeah. tickets can be. But, could you please be a bit quieter? But, on to that sort of thing, mm -hmm. Ollie McBurney 
Because mm -hmm. he'd recently been arrested for assaulting a person on camera. Really? Yeah, well, mm. it, the guy looks exactly like Colin McCartney, and so far, all we've no, noticed is it's a 25 year old man who oh, right. the video. That's also 24. Okay, okay. I might have accidentally said 25 there, but I meant 24. Okay. For me. Like, other than the fact that Bernie said he doesn't even want mm -hmm. to play for the Scottish national team. Yeah. All I'm saying is, if it means, even Sheffield United fans don't want, if it means he doesn't have to kick a ball about for either of the teams, I'm happy enough. Um, right, we'll move on from one final point and then we'll do the, the quiz to end off the podcast. We do it every day. Right. Um, um, importance of fans, Lewis, what does that bring to you? Um, I'll just... I'll just say a bit more. The fans are probably the most important part. Yeah. Um, many teams have yeah, struggled sure. without fans. But many teams have excelled, whether it be some of their players were just more in confidence in here. The yeah. fans, like, they have them for any little mistake. Mm -hmm. They can put them down. Mm -hmm. like, due to many reasons, I think certain players would have regressed without fans. Yeah. But a lot of them would have, would have improved. Like, I, I doubt Stephen Welsh would have been able to come yeah. through and do yeah. what he did this mm -hmm. season last season mm -hmm. with fans. And I, I really do think, like, uh, your sorrows and that, yeah. and even your turnings, definitely would have been able to do what they have. Yeah. Essentially. Well, on I was on the importance of fans, which you've had it right in the, the button, but. I'm going to talk about you about, about, obviously, not just Celtic, but I'm going to go Celtic here because I know, you know, we're all Celtic, me and you are Celtic fans, but basically... Also, it's actually the easiest thing to talk about. Yeah, basically this season, I think Celtic fans, eh, Celtic fans, Celtic, um, like the board and stuff, have treated us more like customers than actual fans, where... Fans. Where they said they in the summer... They as wallets. Yes. Where they can just get money whenever they want to without realising. Yeah. People don't have to spend that money. Mm hmm. Simple, yeah. People have no reason to be loyal to a club. Mm hmm. But Celtic fans do. Every fan does it to the club that they love. Or if they've got the money, of course. But yeah. they were in the middle of a pandemic in June, right? Still in a pandemic in June, right? And the Celtic, or, or May, whenever they renew tickets for our, back in May last year, right? And they came out and said, um, pay how much money it was 400 500 quid depending on your tickets right anyway right so they paid the money Celtic even through a crisis Celtic fans paid the money right and this season Celtic have just threw it right in back in their faces yeah Celtic should have do you know how much money Celtic would have made back with DVDs t-shirts you can think of the lot loose if Celtic spent millions I mean millions on good players and look at the players we bought in the summer I mean yeah, Shane Duffy, some Swedish guy who wanted, Swedish Greek guy who wanted to be a left back, and some English dude who was the best player at Schalke a couple of seasons ago. You know what? No wonder um, West Ham said to Celtic, you can never pay five million or you're not getting a Yeti because he's absolute rubbish. I mean, no, I'm not taking that. A Yeti is a great player. <laughs> <sighs> I mean, all right, he's not. I might, I might have always stepped in the saying rubbish, but I mean, five million. You want quality for five million? You, you spent five million on a goalkeeper, and he's most of the time he sat on a bench or been dropped out of the team. Well, Mabala, in my opinion, for the money, that was unacceptable. Yeah. I think a Yeti just needs a little while to get used to mm -hmm. Yeah. Baseball. All right. Like you can see when he plays, he has a lot of skill. Mm -hmm. And so I will not accept any of your slander <laughs> against this man and his ability. You may continue. Right. Right, Lewis, um, you're going to do go first. I went first last time, so it's a quiz now, okay? Right. Right. Okay, I think for this episode, I think for episodes where you're obviously talking to me over Discord, you just ask me questions. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, okay, that's fine. That's fine. Right, okay. Yeah, and if I'm like, right, I'll say I'll ask you questions. Okay, right. So, the quiz this week is for Lewis. So, Lewis, which team is the first outright winner of the Scottish League title? So, this is the Scottish Premiership. Was it Celtic, Queen's Park, Rangers, or Dumbarton? Dumbarton. Going from Dumbarton. It's correct, Lewis. One point on the board for Lewis there. 
I mark it down one point there. As I said, I know quite a few random facts. It was in 90... Oh, do you know the date, Lucy? Do you know the, the date? Oh, I couldn't no. tell you the date. Oh. Oh. Um, it was in 1891 to 92 season. Uh, they were joint winners with Rangers in 19, uh, 1880. Sorry, 1890 and 91 season. Anyway, we'll move on. Which of these teams has won... I don't know, but it just it just says the the thing. But you know, um, which of these teams has won the title at least once? Was it Falkirk, Partick Thistle, Third Lanark, or St Mirren? Are you gonna go for that? Correct, Lewis. Oh my God, Lewis, you're actually doing well this week. Um, move on, move on. <laughs> um, Aberdeen has won the title on four occasions. When did they the first one? I'll read out the. The season's always, and then you just pick one, okay? So, A is 1936-37 season. B is 1946-47 season. C is 1954-55 season. And D is 1984-85 season. 1946-47. Okay. Correct. Oh, I thought it was correct. I thought it was correct. I gave you hope. Wait, what was it then? It went green. My phone went green a second and it went red. It was 1954-55. You're actually one away. Um, like a season, like a couple of seasons away, but you know. Um, it went green and then, you know, I thought, but... Right, okay. This is the one I, I'm really enjoying this question. It's 2016-17 season. Celtic were undefeated in claiming their then 40, uh, 45th league title and um, winning 34 games and drawing four. Who was the last team to take a point off them? Was it Ross County, Rangers, Partick Thistle, Inverness? Inverness. Incorrect. It was Ross County. It was in game 33. Um, it was a 90 minute penalty to make it 2-2. Then I thought Inverness. Right, two points loose from a couple of questions, not bad so far. The Scottish Football League Division 1, as it was known then, was suspended from 1939 to 1946 due to World War II. Who were the last winners before the suspension? Was it Celtic, Rangers, Hearts, or was it Aberdeen? It was... It was Hearts. Hearts. Incorrect, Lewis. It was Rangers by 11 points and scoring 112 goals in their 38 games. Jesus Christ, imagine scoring for that one. Uh, in, in the 1950s, it was the last competitive decade in Scottish football with the, no, the, the old firm not dominating. How many different teams had won the title between 1950 to the 51 season and the 1950 to 60 season? Was it four, five, six, or seven? Four. Four? Four. I already thought before you said the question four, so that's what I'm going with. Lewis, it's incorrect. It was five. You were one away. <laughs> Again, like, uh, the answer. Um, so Rangers had won four, um, Hibs won two, Hearts won two, Rangers, uh, Celtic won one, and Aberdeen won one. Right, anyway, which of these teams has won the title the fewest times? Is it Aberdeen, Hibs, Dundee United, or Hearts? Um, I'll the game. Hearts. I'm gonna go sure. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> It, it wasn't Hearts, Lewis, it was Dundee United. They won the season in 1982-83 season. Um, moving on. Um, oh, this is a tough one, actually. God, I don't know if you'll get it. Just guess this one. In the 1976-77 season, Willie Petchegrew, finish, finisher, top scorer. Who did they play for? Was it Partick Thistle, uh, Aberdeen, Dundee United and Mullerwell? It was Dundee United, I think. Mullerwell? Oh. I was thinking that. It was with 21 goals. Um, in the 1982-83 season, Dun United won the Scottish Premiership for the first and only time to date. Who did they beat in their final game to clinch the title? Celtic Rangers, Dundee or St Mirren? I do not remember this game myself if I watched back in it. St Mirren. So, St Mirren? Yeah. Okay, well, you're not doing very well on this. I, I, I'm surprised. You know, interesting facts. It was Dundee. They won 2 one they won two one away, and it was a bumper crowd you know, of twenty nine thousand. When it comes to like Scottish football, yeah, that's something I'd, I'm not very smart okay. about. Okay, um, I think we're near the near the end of the quiz. We've got five more questions. We're nearly done. 
Um, in what season shot. did Rangers first win the title outright? Was it 1896-97 season, 1897-98 season, hold on, 1898-99 season, or 1899-1900s? Alright then. The first one. You're probably correct anyway. <laughs> it was in 1898-99 season. In which season did Kamarnock, um... What? Wasn't that the first one? No, that was the last one. In which season did Kilmarnock um, pip hearts for the title on, uh, on goal advantage and advantage that just means beat them basically? Was it 1896 to 97 season, 1957 to 58 season, 1959 to 60 season, 1964 to 65 season? B. What? B. B? Yeah. Yeah, the second choice. Oh, what was. It's incorrect, it was 1964. Who holds the record for the the most goals scored in a single season? Was it Alex Harley, who Huey Ferguson, Jimmy McCrory, or Willie McFadden? Uh, the third one. The third one. It was Willie McFadden. I don't. I, I don't know him as well. All oh, right. Okay. I. I might mean, you get. You might get this one, Lewis. Okay. You might get this one. To the 2019-20 season versus last season, Melville had finished runners up seven times in total. When was the most recent? Was it 2013-14, season, 1931-32? Do you need any of them repeated to listen? No? The first one. The first one? The first one. It's correct, Lewis. See, it's three points on the board. <laughs> I've equalised with my last It's one. three out of fifteen so far for you, Lewis. Three out of thirteen. Sorry, three out of thirteen. That was the, the number thirteen. Right. Last question. Uh, second last question, Lewis. Celtic or Rangers won nine of the ten titles played for in the nineteen seventies. Who won the other one? Was it Hearts, Hibs, Aberdeen, or Dundee United? Aberdeen. Aberdeen. And you get it correct again. It's four points. I think that was the season. I or Celtic or Rangers done nine their own. Um, Aberdeen won it. Pretty sure. Pretty sure anyway. I already knew before that. So. Oh. That's so. Please said Aberdeen. I was like right. Aberdeen. Last question, Lewis. Um, can you make it five out of fifteen? It'll be a good score. You have. Add eight last eight episode. Eight episode, Lewis. So you can get close to it. Um, Rangers won a record. Equal like equal in nine consecutive titles during the nineteen eighties. So it was Celtic back then, okay. Nineteen seventies and nineteen nineties. And which season did that run end? Was it nineteen ninety four and ninety five season? Nineteen ninety five and ninety six. Nineteen ninety six and ninety seven. Nineteen ninety seven to ninety eight. Who was it? The third one. Third one. And it's incorrect, Lewis. It was nineteen ninety seven and ninety eight when they finished runners up to Celtic. You got four. Four out of fifth. I'm art five. Uh, four. Oh, I was four. And I wasn't right. Um, you've got a very um. Y there's a wee bit at the end that says what um explaining like your answer um, what you how good you done and it says not bad but if you were a football team playing at this level you'd be nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, okay, that's it. Okay, just hurry up and end this podcast, man. Uh, okay, look, we just got the meme to finish it off. Lewis, there you go. That's that. Uh, that's what it came up on the, the website. Right, guys, thanks for watching episode two. Hopefully you have enjoyed. And I'll see you guys in episode three very soon, Lewis. Subscribe.